Good afternoon. Um, when I was a little child, um, sometimes I would have a really bad headache, you know, one of these pounding headaches that you cannot get rid of. So what I would do, is what any small child does, I would go to my mom to complain about it. Now, if I was lucky, my mom would give me a painkiller, I would take the painkiller, and when if, within half an hour, my headache would be gone. And ever since I was a small child, I thought it was amazing that such a tiny, small pill can have such a big effect on how I feel. Um, and clearly, medicine are great. They improve our quality of life and they prolong our lifetime. And medicine have been known to mankind for a long time. If you look back in history, uh, the Romans, when they would go to war, they would already bring their morphines and their opium, so whenever one of the arms was chopped off or had some nasty flesh wound, they would have something to relieve their pain. Um, and when we look in the wild, animals are known to use drugs. There are these special monkeys in the jungle, um, and they suffer a lot from parasites, which they get from eating raw food. Now, these monkeys, they're very clever. So, now they found leaves in the forest, and inside these leaves are substances that kill the parasites. So every time now, before they have a big meal, they will eat some of these leaves, um, and they won't suffer from the parasites anymore. So that's all great. So clearly, medicine helps us, they, they make us better. Um, but, unfortunately, there also have a few problems with medicine. The first of all, uh, I want to talk about the side effects. Uh, I'm sure all of you know side effects. Um, so if you take the example again, you have a headache, you take a painkiller, half an hour later, your headache is gone, but now so suddenly your stomach is burning from the drug that you took. And it is because the drug is active, not only in your head, but it's also active inside your stomach. So then we started thinking, would it be nice if we can make a drug that's only um, active inside your head? So if we could decide the time and the place where a drug is active. Another example, and maybe the biggest threat in modern medicine nowadays, is bacterial resistance. Antibiotics are great medicine. They're one of the very few drugs that actually cure you. People don't realize that, but most drugs only relieve you from your symptoms. Antibiotics don't, they make you better. So they're great. But they're under a lot of pressure nowadays. Um, and that's because we use a lot of them in human healthcare and animal husbandry. So what happens is, you have an infection, you take an antibiotic, it kills the infection in your body, that's all fine. But then after a couple hours, this antibiotic is excreted from your body again, and it gets into the environment. Now, in the environment, it's still active. So in the environment, it's also killing um, bacteria that are sensitive to this type of antibiotic. So what happens, they're all going to die. The only bacteria that will live are the ones that are already resistant to these antibiotics. And now these start growing and growing and growing, and we're creating superbugs that we cannot uh, kill anymore. So that's a problem. Um, so we started thinking, how can we deal with this? How can we um, deal with this problem? Because the, if you analyze the problem is with the antibiotic, it's basically the same as with the side effects. And that is, the drug is active at a time and a place where you don't want it to be active. You only want it to be active when it's inside your body, killing the infection. But as soon as it leaves your body, it should be inactive. Now, how can we design a drug which we can control from a distance? What we came up with is, um, doing it with light, because light, first of all, is harmless. I'm exposed to light right now, and nothing happens to me. Secondly, you can very precisely locate light at a time and a place. So if you have light as a trigger, turn your drug on and off, you can very precisely locate that. Um, now, how would you do such a thing? So we started thinking, and inside your eyes, there are very small particles. These particles are called molecules, and these molecules, they respond to light in such a way that when you expose them to light, they change their three-dimensional shape. So they change a little bit. Now, drugs also consist of molecules, drug molecules. So we thought, what if you combine the two? We have a drug molecule. When we shine light on it, it changes its shape. Now, why is that useful? When I try to explain to people how a drug works, I always say you should try to imagine it as a key that fits exactly into a keyhole, where the drug is the key and the keyhole is the target where it works on. So in case of the antibiotics, the antibiotic is the key, and somewhere, something in the bacteria is the keyhole. And if that fits, the bacteria is going to die. Now, if you change the shape of your drug, it doesn't fit anymore, and it's inactive. So by changing the shape, you can inactivate your drug. Um, now, on the next slide, 
I'm going to show you a molecular structure. Don't get scared, I'll walk through it. So here it is. On the left, you see the molecule that we made. This one. And when it's like that, it's off. It has no activity, so it means it doesn't fit in the bacteria. Now, if we shine light on it, only for five minutes with UV light, you can see the molecule changes. Suddenly, this part, which was first down here, suddenly is up here. And now it does fit. So we activated our antibiotic. Now, the great thing about this is that using the heat of your body, this molecule can go back to its original form when it's off in a couple hours. So now imagine you have an infection. You take an antibiotic, but before you take it, you shine light on it. You activate the antibiotic, you take it, it kills the infection in your body. After a couple hours, and it's excreted from your body again, the antibiotic has turned itself off automatically. So we don't get the antibacterial substance in the environment, and we're not creating the superbox that we cannot kill anymore. Now, to prove that this actually works, we did an experiment in our lab. And in our lab, we can grow bacteria under so-called agar plates. There are these plates on the right, oh, these ones on the right, and they're about this size. And inside this agar plate, there's lots of food, so the bacteria, they like to grow on there, unless you put an antibiotic inside. Then the bacteria die, of course. So what we did is we put our photoresponsive antibiotic inside this agar plate, then we put a mask on top, and we're shining light on it. Now, only the parts that were exposed to light, the antibiotic is turned on, which you can see here. Here, there's no growth at all. It's completely empty. The other part, which was not exposed, the antibiotic is off. And you can see all these black spots, they're all bacteria. And this shows with what a great resolution we can do, because this is a very small plate. So we can very precisely locate the activity of our drug. And of course, this is not only limited to antibiotics. You could do this for any kind of drug you think of. So I'm thinking about chemotherapy. People who, cancer patients that undergo chemotherapy, they suffer a lot from the side effects, the really nasty side effects. Now, try to imagine someone with a tumor inside his body. He takes an um, anti-cancer drug, which is off, so it has no activity at all. He swallows it. You wait for a little bit until this drug has reached the tumor, then very locally, you can shine light on the tumor that can penetrate through your body, activate the drug only in the tumor, so only the cancer cells are going to die and are exposed to the active drug, while the rest of your body is not exposed to this active drug and you won't have the side effects. This completely changes the way we think about drugs and how we design them. And I think that this really can have the future and we can make drugs more effective and better than they already are with this method. Thank you very much.